Hello everyone, this is Mr. Zarzik, and in this tutorial we're going to cover free fall, which is what happens when you take something and you drop it. Okay, and we're also going to take a look at projectile motion, which is what happens when you throw it. Okay, so let's get into it. So starting with free fall here, okay, free fall is defined as an object drop from rest. So here we're just going to let it go. It has no initial velocity. All right, an object in free fall will accelerate downward at 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, this is due to gravitation, and on planet Earth, this 9.8 is a measured and experimentally determined value. You can see here that this number is pretty darn close to the number 10, so for the purpose of doing these problems and applying a little bit of mental math, we're going to do, um, approximate gravity in this tutorial as 10 meters per second squared, which is the change in rate a velocity that we call acceleration. It's how that velocity changes every second. In order to calculate the instantaneous velocity of an object drop from rest, we just use our formula for instantaneous velocity. And if you remember, I like to call this ultra mega mega, mega 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 equation one. If we want to know the location of an object drop from rest, we're going to apply our displacement formula. Remember, displacement is position, where position would be how far the object has moved since it was dropped. And if you remember from class, I like to call this one ultra mega 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 equation number two. I don't want you to forget about this formula over here, which is just our average rate of motion times time is the displacement. We say average velocity times time gets us this displacement. Remember that all the equations for physics have got to work or else they're not physics equations. One thing that's kind of nice about working with free fall problems is that that initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second. In fact, that's what drop from rest means. No speed or direction to begin with. In which case, the instantaneous velocity formula simplifies how fast am I going is just the product of the acceleration of gravity times time and where am I just depends upon one half times the acceleration of gravity times time squared because if this initial velocity here is zero no matter what the time value is this term in the equation also becomes zero now if we take an object and we throw it in the air okay things behave just a little bit differently Specifically, you've got two parts of the motion. You've got the way up and the way down. I would really suggest that you take a ball and you try this a couple of times until you can see it, but if you watch the ball on the way up, you'll see that the speed decreases and gets smaller and smaller and smaller until right at the very top of that projectile path, the velocity actually shrinks to zero. And then on the way down, things start to speed up. Now that has to do with what's causing the acceleration, which that's gravitation, okay? Gravity causes a downward acceleration, which on planet Earth is right around 10 meters per second squared. That's what that negative sign is showing. So if I take and I throw my ball up, let's say I give it some initial velocity upwards, okay, well because gravitation is opposing that, it's like we're moving upwards but gravity is acting downwards, so that's going to have the effect of slowing us down. So I'm going to slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, stop. And then now on the way down, well, now the velocity is going to be downward and the acceleration of gravity is going to be downward. So that's going to have the effect of speeding us up, speeding us up, speeding us up. One thing I do want to point out that you want to be careful of, okay, is right here at the top of this projectile path. At the top here, it is true that the velocity up and down shrinks to zero, but gravity doesn't turn off. The ball never stops accelerating. In fact, if the ball did stop accelerating, the ball would reach the top of its projectile path here, and then it would just stop and float, which would be really neat to see and everything, but, well, I've been teaching for a long time now, and I haven't seen it happen yet. If you do, let me know. As far as problem solving and analysis goes, you're going to see that with both free fall problems and these one-dimensional projectile problems, and for a lot of the problems that we work in physics, that this idea of the time of the event is, is often the key to solving the problem. Okay, very often we'll be asked to find something other than the time, but in order to get what we want, we'll need to know the time that we're specifically being asked about. Since I know a little something about the instantaneous velocity at the top of this projectile path, and I know about something about the acceleration, if I just write down the formula for acceleration 
A is equal to the change in velocity with respect to the change in time. And I expand that out a little bit, so we got V final minus V initial divided by my change in time. Okay, well, the nice part about these kind of problems is that that final velocity at the very top of the projectile path goes to zero. And so if I just rewrite this... A is equal to the opposite of the initial velocity divided by the change in time. And I know that the acceleration is caused by gravity, so that'll just have a value of negative 10 meters per second squared. That's equal to negative VI over the change in time. All right, and notice now that I have a negative sign on both sides of my equation, so that just cancels out. And I'm going to take and I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by that change in time. Change in time. So then that goes away. And let me rewrite this because this is already getting a little sloppy. So I got the change in time times 10 meters per second squared is equal to the initial velocity. And one more quick step here. I'm going to take and divide out the 10 meters per second squared to both sides of the equation. All right. And then what I wind up with here is if I just look at the change in time, that's equal to the initial velocity divided by 10. And if I start the clock, if I start recording the time right at the instant that the projectile is thrown, well then my initial time is zero, so this change in time over here can actually just get simplified and say, all right, well, at what specific time do we want to know about the initial velocity when something is thrown in the air? So here's just a little cleaner version of the work I did on the last slide, if you want to use that for your own notes. Um, and now I'm going to show you how we apply these tricks uh, by doing some sample problems. For all these problems that will be working in this tutorial, I will be approximating gravity as 10 meters per second squared down as opposed to 9.8. And that's just going to make our calculations a little quicker and a little easier. So for this first problem, okay, we've got cliff diver Laura. Now it says over here on the right that Laura jumps off a 30 meter tall cliff and plummets. And that there's plenty of water below so that no physics kids will be harmed in the filming of this screencast. I'd also like to point out that even though it says here that Laura jumps, okay, we're going to assume that in this problem that her initial jump, whatever initial velocity she has from that jump is, is small enough to where we're going to treat it as zero. We're going to use this as a, an example problem for free fall. Now, don't worry, we'll deal with uh, what happens when the initial velocity is not zero in just a minute. I also want to point out over here that there's this reference that, that we're being told to orientate up as the positive direction of motion. Now, if we're not told this explicitly, which way to make the positive direction of motion, we get to choose. Okay, but in the case of this problem, uh, the decision has made, been made for us. So right away, since she's in the air, okay, I know the acceleration is going to be caused by gravity, which, again, for this we're going to use 10 meters per second squared, um, but that acts downward, and since upward is our positive direction, that automatically becomes a negative value. All right, the second thing is that since the cliff is 30 meters tall, well then if she jumps down the cliff, her displacement is going to be 30 meters, but it's going to be 30 meters below where she started, so we've got to show that with a negative as well. To solve for this first question of how long to reach the bottom, what we're looking for here is the time. That's the unknown. So to solve for that, I'm going to use ultra mega mega, mega 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 equation number two, d is equal to vit plus one half at squared. This equation simplifies down for us because we're treating this like a free fall problem where our initial velocity is zero meters per second, which means that first term, if vi is equal to zero, well then this whole term just cancels right out of the equation and we're left with d equals one half at squared. Since we want the time here, now a little algebra has to happen. Okay, so first to eliminate the one-half coefficient, 
on the 1 half at squared side, I'm just going to take and multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So that takes care of that. So let's see here, I got 2d is equal to at squared. And then I'm going to take and divide out the acceleration to both sides of the equation. All right, so let me rewrite that again. So I have 2d over a is equal to t squared. And then the last step here would be to take the square root of both sides of the equation. All right, so just moving on down here, let me rewrite this to make this a little cleaner. t is equal to the square root of 2 times d over a. And now, finally, to solve. Okay, the cliff is 30 meters tall, so she's going to go down 30 meters divided by the acceleration, which is caused by gravity, which that's negative 10 meters per second squared. All right, and notice, too, I've got a negative value up on the numerator of this and the denominator, so that's just going to cancel right out. And now it's time to go to your calculator. I'll go to mine. And we have a time of 2.4 five seconds till she hits the bottom. Since I now have that time until impact of that 2.45 seconds, okay, well now I'm going to use that to answer question two, which is how fast will she be traveling right before impact? All right, so to solve this, I'm just going to apply ultra mega 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 equation number one, which is V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. Okay, and again, this is nice because it's a free fall problem with an initial velocity of zero, okay, so she's jumping from rest, in which case, in order to solve, V final is just equal to acceleration times time, where the acceleration is just good old gravity acting downwards at 10 meters per second squared, all right, and I just use that time of 2.45 seconds from the uh, question one which gets me a final velocity of negative 24.5 meters per second. And notice here that the answer that I've solved for is a negative value because, well, as she moves down the cliff, she's going to gain velocity downward. And right before she hits the water, she's going to be moving downward. So the sign of our answer should match that, which it does. All right, so let's try some more. Next we have Margena here. And she's going to throw a bowling ball upwards off the cliff at 40 meters per second. So let's go ahead and write down that initial piece of information. Initial velocity of 40 meters per second. And she's going to throw this upwards. Um, Margena has super human strength from taking physics. 40 meters per second is just shy of 90 miles an hour. Uh, so not quite so realistic. Um, but what the heck. Let's just keep going with it anyway. Uh, we still have gravity acting as our acceleration, so A is equal to negative 10 meters per second squared. Again, the negative for the down. Uh, we still got a height of 30 meters, okay, so we're going to take advantage of that uh, for how long it takes the ball to reach a position 30 meters below where it was thrown. Just like the previous problem, time is our unknown. Okay, so to solve, we're going to use ultra mega mega, mega 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 mega, equation number two, d is equal to vit plus one half a t squared. When we substitute, okay, we're looking for the time when the ball is 30 meters below where it was thrown, where it's thrown upwards at 40 meters per second. All right. And the reason it wound up down there is because of good old gravity. So I wind up with this negative 30 is equal to 40 meters per second times time plus 1 half times negative 10 meters per second squared times t squared. All right, so I've got a little bit of intermediary algebra to do here. So just for, for because of that, I'm going to drop the units just so it's a little easier to follow this. So I've got negative 30 equals 40t, and then let's see here, I have 1 half times negative 10, which is negative 5, so I'm just going to write that as minus 
t squared. Uh, I think the next step will be for me to factor out a 5 from both sides of the equation. So I'm going to divide 5 out on both sides of the equation here. So let's see here, uh, 6 times 5 is 30, so that's negative 6. And let's see here, 5 goes into 40, what is it, 8 times. All right, so oh, don't forget the t. All right, minus t squared. All right, and some of you already know where this is going. Uh, I'm going to take and rewrite this. Let's see here, 0 equals negative t squared plus 8t. And we can't forget about the 6, so the reason I was able to turn the left side of this into 0 is by adding 6 to both sides of the equation. All right, and some of you know it already. Okay, let's see, I've got a coefficient of negative 1, we'll call that a h is the coefficient in front of the t, we'll call that b, and the 6, that becomes our letter c, and it is a quadratic, hooray, a quadratic, if you don't remember the formula for the quadratic, the unknown, or the variable, which in this case is t, is equal to the opposite of coefficient b, plus or minus the square root of coefficient b squared minus 4 times coefficient a times coefficient c that whole thing all over 2 times coefficient a now when you solve for the quadratic equation and this is something that you do need to know how to do on a test so make sure that you can solve these problems you're going to get two answers one of which is negative and one of which is positive um, time is a scalar, it can only have positive values, so that's the one that you're going to keep. And if you do it right, you're going to find the answer is 8.69 seconds. Once we have that time of 8.69 seconds, okay, well then finding how fast the ball's traveling right before impact, we can just use ultra mega 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 equation 1. Final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Final velocity is equal to initial velocity, which is 40 meters per second, plus our acceleration, which is 10 down, so negative 10 meters per second squared, times our t, which is at 8.69 seconds. Sorry, that's a little sloppy. All right, so final velocity go into my calculator. I wind up with a value of negative 46.9 meters per second. And again, the negative sign tells us that right before impact, the ball is moving down, which is exactly what we would expect and would hope would happen when we throw something off a cliff. All right, for this next set of problems, Laura's back. Uh, she's jealous of Marjana, so she wants to show off her physics strength. So now she's going to come along, and she's going to throw a bowling ball at 40 meters per second off the cliff. But now she's going to throw it downward. Uh, notice over here, okay, for these problems, all right, we've been told to orient down as positive, which as we work the problems, you're going to see this is going to make stuff a lot easier in terms of calculation. Because we've chosen to make down our positive direction of motion, well now... Our displacement is down, so we can leave that written as positive 30 meters. She throws the ball down with an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. And again, since down is our positive direction, we can just leave that written as positive 40. And as the ball moves downward, it also speeds up at a rate of 10 meters per second squared. Gravity is down. Down is our positive direction. Everything in here is positive now. Hooray! Once again, we're asked to solve for the time. That's our unknown. So once again, we're going to apply ultra mega 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 equation 2. D is equal to VIT plus 1 half AT squared, where our displacement is 30 meters. All right, our initial velocity is again 40 meters per second. We're looking for the time, and as we fall... The reason our velocity changes is because of gravity, and don't forget the squared with the t. 
dropping our units for our intermediary calculation and to just make this a little bit cleaner because well it's look a little messy up there so I got 30 is equal to 40 T plus 5 T squared all right and you can already see here this is going to be a quadratic all right, I'm going to divide out 5 on both sides of the equation so I have 6 equals 8 T plus T squared uh, be careful in this case because now we've got a couple of signs that have changed from the previous problem so here let me write this as 0 equals now we've got positive t squared plus 8t minus 6 alright so our coefficients are a little different than last time plus 1 for a 8 for b minus 6 for c so when you're applying the quadratic equation uh, be conscious of that you're going to get a different answer because this is a different problem. One more time for the formula. T is equal to negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC, that quantity all over to A. Again, when you solve the quadratic, and this is something that you definitely want to practice because you are going to run into situations where you're going to need to do that. You'll find two times, one negative, one positive, times the scalar. And so it is the positive value that it is our answer, and you should get 0 0.690 seconds. All right, and notice that the time in this problem is a lot smaller than when Margiana threw the ball up, because well, now we're throwing the ball downward at the water. So it only makes sense that it's going to get there a lot quicker. And finally, we're asked to solve for how fast the ball is going to be traveling right before impact when we now know that the time to get there is 0 .690 seconds. All right, and so just like before, we're going to apply ultra mega mega, mega 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 equation number one. V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. So how fast is it going when we throw it downward at 40 meters per second? And gravity is going to speed us up moving downward at a rate of 10 meters per second squared 4.869 seconds and so just solving this last one we'll find 46.9 meters per second and notice again that this is down If you take a look at the speed of the ball right before impact when Laura threw the ball down versus Margena threw the ball up, you should notice something pretty darn interesting there. So take a little time and think about why those two answers are exactly the same. Thanks for watching this tutorial. See your physics teacher with any questions that you have, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.